Hello and welcome to this comprehensive data engineering project on Microsoft Azure. In this project, we'll explore a variety of tools available on the Azure platform, including Data Lake Storage, Data Factory, Databricks, Azure SQL Server, and more. Let's dive into our project plan. Our project begins with CSV files as our data source. To work with our data, our first step involves importing these files into Data Lake Storage. For data ingestion and transformation, we'll turn to Data Factory. You'll see how to create data pipelines using this powerful tool. Data cleaning and transformation, here's where the real magic happens. We'll leverage Databricks, which enables us to manipulate our data using Spark code. This step will involve tasks like importing data into Databricks, removing duplicates, eliminating certain columns, and more. Once our data is primed and transformed, we'll import it back into Data Lake Storage, this time in a container designated for transformed files. Our final destination is an Azure SQL database. We'll start by creating the database. Then, using Data Factory, we'll set up a pipeline to facilitate the import of our transformed data into the database. I hope you're as excited as we are because we have a lot of ground to cover. So, let's jump right in and get started. Okay, great. Now we are here in this Azure portal. As you can see in front of me, I have this homepage. Basically, I have some links here, for example, free online courses, Q&A section, quick starts and so on. Below that, we also have some services here. So, as you can see, we have resource groups, data factories, SQL servers and so on. Also, if you scroll down, we will be able to see again resources and we are able to see this recent and also we have favorite. We have also different options if you scroll down but we will be using the most important ones. How can we find them? If we click on this button here, we'll be able to see some favorite resources. If we scroll down, we will be able to see more of them. For example, Azure Cosmos DB virtual machines and so on. And also there is another option. If you click here, we'll be able to type. For example, if we need storage account, when we type this, we'll be able to see, for example, here storage accounts. Let's click on that and we will be able to start working on storage accounts. As you can see, we also have different options for each of these services, but we will talk about that later. Let's go back to home. First, what we need to do, we need to create a resource group. So let's click on this create a resource. And let's type a resource group. Resource group, if I type that, I'll be able to see resource group. Also, we have another option to type resource groups here. As you can see, we already have that option in these recent services. If I click on this, I'll be able to see resource groups. As you can see, we don't have any, no resources to display. And there is also option to create new resource group. We are going to be clicking on that. Let's click. And now first we will create our resource group. As you can see, first what you need to choose is your subscription. Basically, you will have your free trial account option and when you choose that you will be able to provide a resource group name. In this case let's call it end to end project for example end to end project and also you can provide a region. Let me provide for example Asia. Let's try that. Click next, next and click on create. Now as you can see we successfully created our first resource group. In this resource group we are going to be placing our services, Azure Data Factory, Databricks and so on. So if I click on this resource group here, I will be able some different options on this left side here. And also we have this window which will allow us to create resources. But now let's go back to home page. Now as you can see, now we have our resource group here. So next, let's create our data lake. How can we do that? We will click on this storage account or if you don't have that here, you can type storage account. Storage account. Let's click on that and create storage account. Now you need to provide first subscription. You can choose your subscription and then you will need to choose your resource group. 
that is the group that we created as you can see i already have that option recommended end-to-end -end project and if i don't have that i can also create new resource group but in this case i will choose this one okay now i need to provide storage account name This is already taken, let's something like this. Okay, let's use that. We are gonna be using this standard option and also we are gonna keep this as it is and click on next. Okay, perfect. We can scroll down, we can leave this as it is. And now what is important to check this option. If you check that option, you will be able to use your data lake. So let's click on next. Next. And now we are able to create our data lake storage. Let's click on create and let's wait for process to complete. Ok, great. Now our data lake storage is completed. We can click on this go to resource button. If I click on that, I will be able to see some information about my data lake storage. As you can see, you have different options, for example, upload, opening, explore, delete and so on. And also you have some other options on this left side. For example, this one is interesting. Here you can allow some access to some features and so on. We will be working on this later. Also, we have this data storage section here we are able to see this containers button if I click on that I will be able to see my storage as you can see in this storage we don't have any containers here but how can we create them we can click on this container button here but let me before create go to home tab as you can see now we have our storage account created here if I click on this resource group you will be able to see this belonging data lake storage. Let's go back to home and let's click on our storage account once again. Ok, perfect. Now as you can see we again have those information about our storage but don't worry about that. I understand it's a lot of information but currently it's not important for you to understand this. For you it's important to understand this containers option. This is the most important one for now. Let's click on that and now we will be able to create our containers. So let's create first container here. Let's provide name. I'm going to provide name row data. Data. Mm, ok, I will need to do something like this. Let's try with this. Ok, great row data. If I click on create, I will be able to create my first container. Basically, you can understand container as a folder in your computer. So basically, if you have, for example, one folder and that folder contains multiple files, that will be same like, like our container here. We will be storing files in this raw data container. So let's create one more container. I already mentioned that we will have two containers. First will be for raw data and then for transform data. And we will be using Databricks to transform data from raw data container and to import that in transform data. So let's do that now. Let's type transformed. Transform data. Okay, perfect. Let's click on create. Great, now we have both of these containers. Now we will be able to store our data here. Now that we completed that, let's go back to this home tab here. Now again we are able to see our resources. But let me go back to my presentation. Ok, here is my presentation. Let's make it bigger. Ok, perfect. Now as you can see, we created raw data and transform data containers. This is data lake that we created and this part is complete. Now what we need to do? We need to import those CSV files in that data lake. 
So now we need to create this resource. This will be also one resource as we created data lake. That way we'll be creating Azure Data Factory. Later on, of course, data bricks, SQL database and so on. But now let's create Azure Data Factory. Okay, perfect. Let's go back to our portal and let's type Azure Data Factory. As you can see, I already have that recommended here, but let me just show you Azure Data Factory. Okay, let's try to delete this Azure data factories. Okay, great. As you can see, we don't have any resources here, so we will need to create our data factory. Let's click on this. And now we will need to provide some information. First is again our subscription. You already saw that you need to provide your free trial account. And also, next one is resource group. I'm going to provide my resource group that I already created. Let's choose that one. Okay, perfect. Now we need to provide name for this data factory. Let's call it end to end. End to end. Okay, perfect. End to end data factory. For this one, let me choose something else. Let's try something like this. This one is not important. It's basically a region where you would like to, let's say, place your resources. I'm going to leave this option also as it is. Review and create. Let's click on this create button. Now this data factory resource is completed. As you can see, we have these options go to resource. Let's click on that. If I click on that, I will be able to see this data factory window. And now I have this Azure data factory and I can start working in this data factory now. But let me before that, let me go to this home tab just to see what we have now here. As you can see, we have this end to end data factory resource. And if I click on this resource group, I will be able to see also my Azure Data Factory. So let's go back to home. Okay, now that we created Azure Data Factory resource, now we can go back to Data Lake Storage. Let's click on this Data Lake Storage and let's click on these containers. So now we are able to see those two containers that we already created, but now I would like to add another one. This container will be storing our CSV files. So let's click on container, let's type staging and let's create, well let's actually type staging data and create. Ok perfect, now it's completed and let's click on this staging data container. Now I will need to upload some files on this container, so let's click on upload. Let's click on this Browse for Files option and now I will be able to find my files here. I already have them here on desktop. I will provide of course those files in the description of this video. So you will be also able to import them. Basically these are four files that I will be importing. Let's do one by one. Let's first import these customers, then payment method, sales channel and fact sales. Let's click on open and then upload. Ok, perfect. Now we have all these files imported. Now that we completed that we can go back to Azure Data Factory. So let's click on this Home tab and let's go to our home page here. Basically this is our data lake storage and now we have files stored in one of the containers. So let's use Azure Data Factory to move files from one container to another. Let's click on launch. And now that we are here, let's go to this outer tab. Let's click on that and let's create a new pipeline. Ok, perfect. Now that we completed that, let's click on this move and transform. 
If I expand that, I will be able to see my copy data feature here. Let's place it here. And now we will need to provide some values. First, we have this general tab. And here we need to provide name. So let's say, for example, import data. Import data. Okay, perfect. If we scroll down, we will be able to see that these are some default options. So we don't need to change anything here. We can go to this source tab. Now we need to provide our source data set. So let's click on this button here. And if we click on that, we will be able to see that we don't have any data sets. So we will need to create new. Let's click on new. And now we have multiple options. We have, for example, S3 bucket. Also we have blob storage. We have, for example, MySQL database. Postgres and so on, but this time let's use this Azure Blob Storage. Let's click on continue. Let's choose our file format. In our case is CSV. You have also option for Excel, JSON and so on. But let's click on that one. Continue. And now we will need to provide name for that source. Let's say import data. Import data. Okay, like that. And we need to create link service. Let's click on new. Let's call this import data one, for example. This option I can leave it as it is. And now I need to choose Azure subscription option. Let's instead of select all, let's choose our subscription. And now let's choose storage account name. In our case, it's this end to end project. If I choose that, I will be able to create my connection. So let's click on this test connection. And as you can see, it's successful. Okay, now that we checked that, we can create our link service. And now we have that link service already chosen. So this is link service that we created now. Now that we completed that, we need to provide file path for our CSV files. So let's provide by clicking on this browse. And we have three containers that we created. Row data, staging data and transform data. Let's click on staging data. And let's click for example first for dim customers. Let's click on OK. Let's leave this option first row as header and also import schema and let's click on OK. Now we completed this source section. But now we can check if we did it properly. How can we do that? We can click on this preview data. If I click on that, if I completed everything properly, I will be able to see my data, which is true in this case. We have our data here and we are able to see it. So let's close this one. Now we need to import our data somewhere. In this case, it will be also Azure Data Lake, but this time we will be using another container. So let's click on sync, sync data set. I also need to provide new. Let's click on that. And again, use Azure Blob Storage. Let's click on continue. Choose file format. It's CSV. Continue. And now again, we need to create linked service. But basically, we already created one for previous data importing. So let's try to use that one here. If I do that, I will be able to see this file path option. So I will need to provide my file location. Let's click on that. And now, instead of staging data, I will need to provide raw data because we would like to load our data into this container here. Let's click on OK. And now I need to provide file name. In this case, file name will be, let's call it dim customers. Customers. Let's type raw data, for example. For this one, let's choose none because we don't have any schema or anything else. And let's click on OK. If I do that, I will be able to see that we completed this sync section. We can click on this and we can click on this debug option. But before that, we need first to validate pipeline. So let's click on validate. If we check for any errors, no errors, as you can see here. And now we can debug basically this pipeline. So let's click on debug. And now let's see the status. As you can see, status is succeeded. 
Basically this means that we should be able to see our file now in raw data container. So let's publish all just to be able to save our pipeline. Publish. After we publish that we will check if we did everything properly and if we have our CSV file imported in raw data container. So let's do that now. Let's go to this tab here and let's go to this home tab. Now let's go to data lake storage. Let's click on that. Let's click on containers option. And let's see our raw data folder. As you can see now we have our file imported. If I open it and click on edit you will be able to see our data here. As you can see we successfully imported everything. Let's close this one and now we need to do the same for the rest of these files. So let's do the same. Let's go back to our Azure Data Factory and I'm gonna create again this pipeline here. Basically I will need to call them differently. Let's call this one for example if I click on general let's call it import data let's call it customers and for this one it will be I'm not sure which which one is next but let's provide for example import data Let's leave this for now, but I will change it later. So we need to provide source and sync again. Now let's do that. Let's click on this source. And for the source data set, we also need to create new. Let's find this option, Azure Blob Storage. Basically, this is our data lake. Continue. CSV file. Continue. And now we can choose our link service. And now we need to provide file path. Let's click on this, staging data. And next one will be, let's see, payment method, okay. We will use this first row as header and also import a schema from this connection because we already have that file here. Click on okay. And now we will be able to complete this source section. Let's again preview our data. And now we are able to see that we have some values for payment method, credit card, PayPal, cash, Bitcoin and so on. Let's close this one. And now let me change this first. Let's provide, let's provide this payment method here. Okay, perfect. Now I need to provide this sync value. Let's click on new. Azure Blob Storage. Continue. Again CSV file, continue, and now let's choose our link service. Let's find our file, raw data. Okay, file name will be dim. Payment method, okay perfect. This, for this one I'm going to put none and let's click on OK. Also I'm going to connect these. So if I execute this properly it will automatically run this pipeline here. So let me just zoom out a bit. Let me move them like this. Just to be able to see everything. Okay, perfect. Now let's create two more. Copy data and one more time. For this one, let's call it import data and this one will be data sales. And this one I also need to see the name of that file. And let's provide source and sync values for both of these. Let's click on new. Azure blob storage. Basically our data lake. Continue. CSV file. 
continue link service we will choose that one that we created and now let's find our file staging data and this is dim sales channel okay perfect dim sales channel let's leave this as it is and also this one let's click ok and this source is completed now let me change the name sales channel perfect and what is left to be done for this one is this sync option new blob storage continue csv file again link service we will choose our existing link service let's find our container raw data okay and now i'm gonna just here put none first row i will leave as it is and let's click on ok let's connect one to this one and let's do the same for the last one for sales let's create a new azure blob storage okay perfect import data and let's find our file staging data now it sales okay perfect we can leave this as it is now we completed this source option let's preview our data this will be bigger data set as you can see we have a lot of columns and rows here and we need to provide sync option new this one okay perfect i'm doing this quickly because i think you already understand the logic here let me browse let me find my file raw data again but for you it's good to do everything step by step just to understand it better and to learn better by repeating everything okay file name will be fact sales raw data i forgot maybe to put this for previous files but i will be able to change it later i think everything is fine let me let me just click ok and it should be fine now let me connect this to this one and now let's validate everything we don't have any errors let's close that one and let me debug everything basically let me run my pipeline to see if everything will be fine and also we can go back to our azure data lake storage home storage account let's go to containers and let's find this raw data currently we have only dim customers we already completed that part but we are but we are still waiting for those for customers it's perfect and for payment method it's also done as you can see here now we are waiting for two more pipelines as you can see those two are completed let me refresh this one and now we have also sales channel payment methods and now we are waiting for fact sales let me rename this one save And as you can see, we also imported this fact sales. And now let me just change for this one. Let me change that name. Our raw data, save. And now we successfully imported our data. This means that this, let me show you, this first step is completed. 
So basically we imported those CSV files in that staging container and then we used Azure Data Factory to import it into raw data. What is also important to mention, you can use this Azure Data Factory not only to connect to Data Lake container, but you can also use it to extract data, for example, from some databases, some software tools, and so on. So basically, now that we completed this part, now we will be able to import our data in Databricks, and after that, we will be transforming our data and importing it to this transform data container. So we will do that in the next step. Now it's time to start working in Azure Databricks. So let's check our project plan. Let me just show you like this. Let's click on this slideshow. And now, as you can see, we completed this first step here. And now it's time to load and transform our data using Databricks. So let's do that now. First, I'm going to need to create Databricks as a resource. So let me show you how can you do that. Right now I'm in this Azure portal and now we are able to see this search bar here again. So let's start typing. I'm gonna type Databricks and you will be able to see this option Azure Databricks. Let's click on that. We are in this Azure Databricks window and we have also opportunity to create our Databricks service. So let's click on this button here and then we need to provide a few values. First is Azure subscription. We are gonna choose the one that we are using and also we need to provide this resource group. So let's click on this. Let's find our resource group that we already created. Okay, perfect. Next one is workspace name. So basically this will be the name that we will be using for our Databricks. So let's call it end to end project. For example, something like that. Okay, perfect. I will leave this as it is. Let's check for this one. Let's use the premium one. And let's click on this review and create. Now let's click on this create button. And then we will be able to create our Databricks service. We just need now to wait for this process to complete. As you can see now Databricks is created and now we are able to use this resource. So let's click on this button here, go to resource. And now we will be able to see this Databricks window. If we click on this option here, we will be able to start Databricks. So let's click on that. And we will be able to see new window opening. And now we will be just waiting for Databricks to open. And now we are able to see this Databricks workspace. What is now important for us is these few options here. We will be talking about them. So let's see what we can do in Databricks. Basically we have this new option. If I click on that, I will be able to create new, as you can see, notebook, repo, file, cluster and so on. Also we are able to use this workspace. If I click on that, I will be able to create new workspace and type some code inside it and so on. Also, we have some recent notebooks, some catalog option, workflows, and also we have this compute option. Now we will need to use this option. And why is that so? It's because we need to create, basically, we will need to create this feature in order to be able to create notebooks and then run our scripts and codes and so on. So let's click on this create compute. For this policy option, I'm gonna leave this one as it is. And for this one, I'm gonna click on this single node because I'm using only one computer. So basically I don't need multi node for that purpose. For this option, let me see, I could leave this by default. Also for this standard one. And let's create compute here. Now we are waiting for this to be completed. Okay, now we can see that this is completed. So let's see now if we can use this. Let's click on this workspace option. And now I'm gonna need to create new workspace. So let's click on this add option. Let's click on notebook. And now we will be able to create our first notebook in Databricks. I don't need to see this. Okay, perfect. Now what is important to do? First we will provide name and also we need to provide our connection basically. This is cluster that we just created a few moments ago in this compute section. So we are going to just choose this one. That's the reason why we created that compute instance. So let's click on this 
and now we will be able to connect our notebook to that cluster. Let me close this one and now let's change this name. Instead of this let's put and end to end project press enter and now we are able to type our code here. So let's again go to that project plan that we have. If we click on this, let's go here, slideshow. Okay, perfect. Now as you can see, we need to connect these data bricks to Azure Data Lake. So we will need to create some kind of connection between those two. And now I'm gonna show you how you can do that. Basically now we have data lake already created and we have our data in that raw data container and now we need to get the data from that raw data container. To do that we will need to connect these two. We just created this Databricks resource and also we created that cluster that we connected to our notebook. Now let's create that connection between those two. So if I go to Azure portal again, if I go to this tab here, let's go to home and now let's click on this search bar here and now let's type app and now let's choose this first option. Let's click on that and now we will be able to see that we don't have any applications here so we will need to create new application. Let's click on this and now let's provide name for this application. App01 for example, I'm gonna put something like that. That is the only information that you need to provide. Let's click on this register and now let's wait for Azure to complete it. Now as you can see it's done and now we are able to see some information about that. This is important for us and now we will need to use some of this information. First we will need to use this application client ID. I'm gonna copy this one, control C and let's paste it here. So application ID is this one here. Let me just mm, put everything in one row. Okay, perfect. This is application, basically client ID. Let's delete this client ID. We will use this just to store this information. Later on we will be deleting this, so don't worry about that. What is also important for us is this information here, tenant ID. So let's copy this one. Let's paste it here and let's do the same for that one. Okay, perfect. Now we have those two informations. Let's go back to our application. Now that we completed that, we have to complete one more thing in this service here. So let's click on this certificates and secrets. If I click on that, I will be able to see that I don't have any new secrets or something else. So let's create a new one. I'm gonna click on this one here and now I will be able to create my client secret. So here let's provide some description. I'm gonna put secret key for example. Click on add. That's all that you need to provide. Now we created this secret key and this is value that we will be using. It's important to copy this value, basically not this secret ID but this one value here. So let's click on copy and let's paste it here. This will be our third value. So we will be using all these values. You will see now for what. Basically now that we completed that we are done with this section here. So let's click on home and we will be able to see this home page again. Now let's go to these storage accounts and let me find my storage account. As you can see we have another one right now because Databricks created one for that service. So we will be using this one of course. Let's click on containers. And now I would like to see my storage account and container names because we will also be able to use that to get our data. So let's go back to Databricks and now I'm gonna copy some code that we will be using. So if I click on B I'll be able to insert multiple Ds. If I click on delete two times I'll be deleting any of these. So double D and you will be deleting. In this one I'm gonna copy some code that I already created but you will be able to see what this code means. So let's copy that and now this is code that we will be using. Let me delete few of these and also this. Okay perfect. Now we are able to see our code. 
This one we'll be deleting later on. So what this code represents? First, we need to import some libraries. We'll be importing this column from PySpark functions library. So basically we need some functions to execute in order to import our data, to get our data, transform data and so on. So for that purpose we need to import some libraries that are not imported by default. So that's the reason why we need to import that. Okay, next one is this library here. As you can see we have some data types here. So we'll be importing different data types, for example date, boolean type and so on. And now next one is uh, basically mounting data bricks on top of data lake. This means that we need to create connection between data bricks and data lake. So this code will provide that. Now we need to provide few values here. As you can see we will be creating some configurations variable and we will be providing some code here. For this one it's basically it's not important for you to understand that now and also for next one. What is important for you? For you it's important to provide here client ID. That's the information that we need to provide. Basically inside of these I'm gonna need to provide client ID. So this is client ID that we copied. So let's copy this one more time. And instead of this let's provide client ID. So we have our first information in place. Let's proceed to next one. Next one will be this tenant ID. So let's copy that one. And as you can see, we have this tenant ID here. I'm gonna replace that with my tenant ID. Okay, perfect. And we have one more information. Let's copy this information here. And now you will be able to see what this information represents. It is our secret key ID that we created in that app. So let's paste it here. Now that we completed that, this first part is done. So let's proceed to next one. Now we need to create that connection. So basically we are mounting data bricks on top of data lake. Basically which means that we are connecting one to another. So for this one we need to provide this fourth information. First we need to provide container and then storage account. So let's find our container. If I go to this tab here I will be able to see my container is let me see staging data. If I remember, no, let's use raw data. Sorry, my mistake. Yes, we will be using raw data. So basically that is container that we need to provide. Let's copy this container name. Let's go to Databricks and here instead of this one here, let's provide container name, raw data, perfect. And now we need to provide storage account name. Let's go back to this uh, data lake storage account. Uh, let me let's just go to home. Just I'm going to show you one more time. Storage account. And now this is our storage account name. And if you click on that, we'll be able to see these containers. So we copied this container. And now let's copy this storage account. So let's paste it here now. Instead of all these... Ok, perfect. And now we successfully provided all needed data. What is important to mention? First, you need to provide container and then you need to provide storage account. If you do the opposite, you will get an error. So be careful with that. Let me see if I run this code, what will happen. So basically to run this code, you just need to be in this cell and just click on this run button here. So run cell. I'm not gonna need this. As you can see this running is in progress, so we are now waiting for that outcome. And basically we have this true here, which means that we successfully created connection between those two. So now let's try to import actually some data from our data lake storage account. For that I'm gonna insert new cell, so let's type B. And now I'm able to see new cell and also I'm gonna type some code. So let's try to insert our first file. Let's see our first file name. If I go to raw data, let's use this dim customers first. Let me copy this. I'm gonna paste it here. And now let's import actually this table to Databricks. First let's type spark.read. Read is the function that we'll be using. Basically on top of spark we are using read function. 
and also we need to provide format for our file format and inside I'm gonna provide format is CSV I'm gonna type dot which means that we are adding another function this time I'm gonna use option so let's use this option what this means this means that we will be able to keep our header so basically we will provide header header and now I will type true which means that our table contains header so we will keep them let's type load basically now we will be able to load our file and now I'm gonna need to provide this mount point that I created so let's use this one I'm gonna paste it here let's just open quotes I'm gonna paste it here and now what we need to provide is container name which is raw data if I remember correctly raw data let me see if it's correct no it's without underscore it's just something like this okay perfect and now we need to provide name of our file it's this dim customers row and dot csv so basically what we did here we are using this variable we are going to be storing all this information in that variable basically you will see that we will be storing actually our data frame so what we did here first we use this spark and then from spark we used read method basically to read our file provided format csv we also kept our headers and then actually we loaded our data if i click on this run run cell okay now that we executed our code we can see that this operation failed so let's see this message here so basically we are not authorized and we don't have permission to access this location here raw data dim customers so basically for some reason we cannot access it and now let's see what we need to change let's go back to our data lake storage account let's go to home and let's click on this storage account here now let's go to our containers section and then raw data now what we need to provide we need to provide access to this container from databricks how can we do that that app registration that we created now we will allow to access this data lake storage so let's click on this access control and now click on this add role assignment let's click on that now we will be able to see different roles here we need specific one in our case it will be our data lake storage in this case it's called blob storage so let's find it here so this is storage blob data contributor we'll be using that so blob storage is basically data lake storage and we'll be using this contributor option we have also this owner option reader and so on but let's use this time this one let's click on next and now we will be able to see this members tab that we are currently in and now we need to assign members for that role so let's click on select members now let's type app here and now we will be able to choose this app that we created let's click on select and now let's see if we did everything properly let's click on this review and assign and one more time and now this role is assigned so let's go back to databricks let's execute this code one more time let me close this i'm going to execute this code and now we have some different error as you can see we cannot find this path here so let's see what we can change here okay now let's try to remove that container here and now let's check if it will be working let's click on this run button let's remove this csv one more time and now we are able to import our data so basically I deleted that CSV because if you can check in my container let's check our files they don't have that .csv at the end so I just removed that 
So you just need to provide name of your file and in this case I removed container because I already provided it here. As you can see here. Okay, perfect. But now let's see our data. Let's type dim dim customers row dot show. This is basically the option to show our data frame. So let's run this code. Run cell. And now we are able to see our data frame imported. Also, when I'm talking about data frames, basically you can understand data frame as a table. You have columns and you have also rows. So whenever I mention data frame, you will just know that I'm referring to table. Now that we completed that, this first connection part is done. Okay, now let's start real coding. As you can see, now we have our data set in front of us. And for each of these tables, we will have a few tasks. So let's start with the first one. First one for each table is basically to import our data. So we did it successfully, we imported our data here. And now it's time to uh, transform it. Now let's see what we can change in this data set. First, we are able to see this type column here. As you can see, we have for each of these rows, we have type slash person. Basically, we don't need this type slash, so we will be deleting that. I'm gonna leave only this person here. So let's see how can we do that. I'm gonna add another cell. So this is our cell. And now we will need first to import libraries that we will be using for data transformation. So basically, we will import multiple libraries, not just for this transformation, but for all transformations that we will be applying on our data sets, basically on our tables. So from PySpark dot SQL dot functions. From that, let's import. So let's start with call. This is first library that we will be using. Next one is when. This one we will be using for conditions. Descending we will be using for sorting our data. Now this one is also important for for replacing some characters in our data. So that one is also important. And the last one is trim. Basically this will be using to trim space from our columns. So this is also important function. Also I'm gonna import some data types from then I can copy this here. So let's paste it here. And now type dot types. Import integer type. Double type, boolean type. And date type. Okay, perfect. Now we can execute this code. Let's click on this, run cell. Now we are able to see that we have some error here. So let's type E here. Now it's perfect. Let's run one more time. Let's also fix this. And now we successfully imported all these libraries. So let's add another cell. Now this one will be for actually transforming our first table. First table will be customers. Customers. And now I'm gonna just, to be easier for you to understand, I'm gonna just put this code there. Because for each table we will be importing data, then transforming it, and also exporting to Azure Data Lake Storage. So let's remove this here. We don't need that. Okay, perfect. Now we imported libraries. We have our data, now let's start transforming. So first step is basically to import this data. And next one will be, as we discussed earlier, to remove this type here. So for that purpose, we're gonna be using this function replace that we imported here. So let's start typing. I'm gonna use this variable that I provided. This is basically my table name. So I use the same name for variable. You can use, for example, DF or something else, but this time it's easier because we have multiple tables. So just to be able to recognize each of them. So again, dot, and now type with column, with column and open parentheses. And now we need first to provide name of our column. So we will be doing this transformation on this column, so it's type. So let's copy this column name here. And I'm gonna paste it here inside quotes. 
each column we need to provide in quotes. So next step is to use actually this function that we imported. So let's use this function. And now let's open parentheses once again. And now we need to provide some parameters for this function. As you can see, we have values that we need to provide here. First is column name, then some pattern and replacement. First, we need to provide column name. It's also type. Let's copy this one. I'm going to paste it here. And now it is column. So we will be using just this function that we also imported. Let's place this column name inside this. So now it will be recognized as column. Next argument is what we need to remove. Basically, we will need to remove this type slash. Type slash. And let's provide value that we would like to replace that with. Basically, it will be nothing. So I'm going to just provide empty quotes. If I execute this code, I will be able to see what will happen. So let's execute this code. And now, as you can see, it's successfully completed. Now let's check our data. Let's run this show function one more time just to be able to see our data. And now we are able to see that in this type column, we don't have any more that type slash string that we had. Okay, that's perfect. Now let's move to the next transformation. Next, I would like to remove all duplicates if we have them in this data set. So basically, if customer ID has, for example, multiple records, I would like to see only the first one. So how can we do that? We'll be using drop duplicates function for that purpose. So let's see how can you do that. I'm going to also copy this one here equal to and again here. And now let's apply our function drop duplicates. Let's open parentheses and now we need to provide only one argument here, only column in which one we will be searching for duplicates. For example, if we provide this customer ID, for example, we will be searching through this column. And if we have, for example, two or more values the same, then those will be removed. Only one will be left. Let's see how can we do that. We need to open quotes and I'm going to provide my column name inside these quotes and it's also necessary to provide everything in this square brackets. So let me just paste it here. And now let's try to execute this code. If I run this cell, it's completed properly. And now let's see our data. Okay, perfect. If I run this, basically we will not be able to see any changes in data, but as you can see, Sorting is now different, which means that we already deleted some rows that were duplicates. Basically, now we need to sort these values properly. So how can we do that? We'll be using order by function for that purpose. So let's now again copy this here. And now let's use order by order by. And now I'm going to need to provide my column name. It's again customer ID. I would like to sort it by customer ID. I'm going to provide it here. And now when I execute this, I will need to assign that to a variable again. So let's copy that one more time equal to and we will be saving that to our variable, basically to our data set. If I run this code, run cell. Basically, everything is completed properly again. And now let's see our data. It should be sorted based on this column here. Let's check if it's the case. Exactly. It's sorted properly and now we are able to see our data. Okay. Now that we completed that step, let's check what else we need to fix in our data set. Basically, as you can see in this age column, we have age, which is normal, of course, but we also have this male and M. Basically, those are entries that we wouldn't like to see in age. So my idea is to remove them. So. Let's see how can we do that. Now I'm going to need to filter my data. And now let's before that, let's first add another cell just to see what we have basically in that column. So I'm going to copy this one. I'm going to show you how you can see only one column. You can use select for that purpose. I'm going to open this and let's provide column name. It's age in this case. And now this way we will be able to call this column. And now Let's use show just to be able to see this column. Let's run this code. Uh, basically my mistake select. Okay, perfect. 
And now we are able to see our eight column. As you can see, we have this male, this M here, and we need to remove that basically. So let's see how can we do that. I'm going to remove this. It was just for demonstration. And now let's go to our cell. And next is filtering basically our data. So let's see how can we do that. As you can see, I first need to provide my dataset name. And now let's type dot filter. This is pretty much clear. So we are using filter option. And now what we can do, we need to provide that column that we would like to filter by. So let's use this call function that we imported. And now let's provide name of our column. It's age. Let me just put like this age. Okay, perfect. And next one is let's type cast open parentheses and then type int like integer type again is not null. Let's open parentheses once again. And now we have our function created. This function will basically go through this age column and for each values that are not numeric, it will remove them. So it will remove basically those rows, not only in age column, but all these rows belonging to this data set here. So if I assign this to this variable here, we will be able to see if we completed properly that function. Let's run our cell. We don't have any errors. And now let's see our data set. Let's run this. And now let me just scroll this. Now we are able to see that we don't have any more values like mail or something else in this age column and we completed this task properly. This is also a very useful function. So I think you will be able to use it a lot in your work. We have only one more task here. So what I would like to do. If you check this gender column, you will be able to see that for some entries we have F, for some of them we have male. So basically I would like to standardize that somehow. Basically M should be male. We don't need to have M and male. We will just be able to see male and female. So instead of F, we will provide female. Instead of M, we will provide male. So let's see how can we do that. If I use just that replace function, I will be able to replace this M with male, but also I will be replacing this M with male. So that is not the correct way. So I'm going to use other option. Let me show you how you can do that. Let's press enter and I will add another function. Let's use our data set again. Type with column, with column, open parentheses. And now we need to provide first name of our column. In this case, it's gender. Uh, let me remove this. And now we need to provide few more arguments. Next one is basically our function for filtering our data. We will not be using this one. This time we will be using, if we check what we imported here, we will be using this function. So when condition is met, we will do something. When another condition is met, we will do something else and so on. So let's see how can we apply that. Here I'm going to type when. I'm going to open this and now we need to reference our column. So let's use call function and let's provide column name. Gender. Okay, perfect. So we need to provide now condition. When this gender column is equal to what? Let's provide first M. Then we will replace it with male. Now we have our first condition. When our value is m, we will replace it with male. But also we need to provide condition for female. Okay, I don't need this one. Let's here type again when. And now let's again open parentheses. And now let's copy this one because it will be similar. I'm going to paste it here. So when gender is equal to f, then it will be female. Basically, it's very simple. We just need to provide condition and then what will happen if that condition is met. But what in case if we have proper value in our column? For example, if we already have male or female value, what do we need to see in our column? Basically, in that case, we will just leave that as it is. So for that, we will be using otherwise. Otherwise, then again, we need to provide column. So let's provide it like that. which means that otherwise we will be just leaving those existing values. So this is perfect for us. Now let's try to execute this code. If I run cell, let's see if we have any errors. 
No, it's completed successfully and now let's check our data set. Now let's see those values here. We still have some values here if I see correctly. Yes, basically we have some error here in our function. Now let's see what we need to change here. Basically we did everything properly here. This function is correct, but what is important, we didn't save those changes to our variable. So that's the reason why we don't see those values. Basically we didn't save it in our data frame. So let's run this code one more time. And now let's execute this one more time. And now let's check we have all proper values in our column. So that's perfect. Now with this we completed this first table and what is left to be done is to export this table to our data lake container. Basically we will need for this purpose to create again this connection like we did here. And let's see why is that the case. So basically we created connection for this row data container and if we go to our data lake storage so let's go to this storage here and so let me go to containers and now we will be able to see that we have multiple containers. We created connection for this one but we didn't create connection for this one. So we will need to do that now in order to access this container and import our data here. So how can we do that? We will create another script for that. We will be copying this one. We don't need those basically. We just need this part of code. Let's copy that and now let's paste it here. Now let's use function to export our data and later on we will be changing those values that we need to change in this code here. So uh, basically let's first copy this one here. Let's paste it here and now let's type write. Basically this is function that we will be using for writing our data into data lake storage account. Type dot option. Again we will provide this header parameter. Header. Okay. It's true. So basically we will keep our header. And now let's type CSV. So basically we will be saving this file as CSV. And now we need to provide values here. It will be similar like this one that we provided here for load. Let me show you. Yes, for load. But we will need to, to change something here. We will need to create different connection. We have connection this data engineering. And in this case, let's provide some other value. Let's, for example, provide name of our data set here. If I do that, this will be our mounting point. And now I will need to provide that also here. So let's first copy this one here. Okay, great. And now I'm going to need to provide name of my file. Let's provide this here. And instead of row, let's type transformed. Transformed. Okay, perfect. Let's see if we need to change something else. I think, yes, we need to provide this new container here. Transform data. Don't forget to put that. This storage account is same. So basically we don't need to change that. And now we should be able to uh, basically export our data to data lake storage account. So let's try to run this code just to see if we have any errors. It's still running as you can see and now we are waiting for Databricks to export it to Azure Data Lake Storage to this transformed data container. We don't have any errors here but let's check if we have our data here. For now there is nothing here in this, as you can see, let me show you, in this trans transformed data container. But if we refresh it, as you can see, now we are able to see our file. This is basically just one file and inside of that you have multiple values. That's the way that Databricks saves our file and basically this is our file that we saved here. We can use it later on for exporting to database or something else. So perfect, we created the first transformation. Let's go back to home and now let's go back to Databricks. Now we need to do the same for next table. Next table in our case will be, first we need to add another cell. Next table will be, let's use sales channel. I think that's the next one. Let me see here. Containers.
raw data and let's try sales channel basically first and after that I'm gonna use this payment method let me do like this and let's for this one let's comment it out uh, sales sales channel okay perfect now we need first to import our data we already created as you can see this connection with this raw data container and now we are able just to import this file separately so let's copy this first row here we already imported but just different file and now we will be able to paste it here and instead of this dim customers row i'm gonna copy this and paste it here i'm gonna import this time sales channel row and let's place this here and now this will be name of our variable if i execute this code i will be able to see that we don't have any errors let's add another cell here and let's copy this one and i'm gonna be using this show function just to be able to see our data and what we need to change here you can see we have only two columns we have sales channel id and sales channel basically name so first what we need to do first we have some null values in these rows so i'm gonna remove all of these and after that i'm gonna need to remove those duplicate values if you remember we also remove duplicate values from previous table so it will be simple for us to do that again now let's press enter and first let's remove these null values how can i do that i'm gonna use na drop function for that purpose so let's copy this one i'm gonna paste it here dot na it means null values basically and drop so we'll be dropping those na values now if i execute this nothing will happen so i need to assign that to my table if i run this code let's run the cell and if i see my table now I will be able to see that we don't have any null values now. So next step will be to remove those duplicates. Also we have that drop duplicate option that we already used. So let's use it one more time here. Let's place it here and this is our data set. We will need to change that. Let's provide new data set. I'm gonna save it also to that new one. And this is drop duplicates function. And now we need to provide new column name instead of customer id here we have sales channel id sales channel id let's provide it here and if i run this code and if i check my table now i don't have any duplicates here but there is also one problem we don't have that data sorted so let's use sort function again basically function is called order by so we're going to be using that let's copy this one i'm going to paste it here dot order by and let's provide column name column name is sales channel id by default it will be descending we could also use this descending option that we included but now ascending is perfect for us if i assign this back to our variable it will be perfect now let's run this code we don't have any errors great let's run this code here and now our data is properly sorted basically with this we completed this table and now what we need to do is also to import the data in azure data lake storage account so let's copy that code that we included here and now we will need to change few things here of course let's paste it here okay perfect those values will stay the same and now transform data stays the same what we also need to provide is this value here let me just copy this one here and let's place it here also let's replace this value and this value instead of row it will be transformed transformed now this should work fine if i run this code let's check if we have any errors okay perfect no errors here and now if i go to that transform data 
I will be able to see this second table imported. So great, we completed that second table and now let's proceed to the next one. Let's add another cell below. Ok, as always we will need to import our data first. So let's copy this code here. I'm gonna paste it here. Ok, perfect. Now our table name will be, let's see how it's called. Raw data. It's this payment method raw data. Let's paste it here and also this is the table name. So now again as you can see we are using this Spark just to read functions from Spark. Read function is to read our data. We need to provide format name again CSV file. Option to keep our header and also to load basically our data. If I run this code We don't have any errors, so let's check our data. I'm gonna, instead of this one, I'm gonna paste it here. Let's run cell. And now we will be able to see this payment method table. We also have some null values here, and we are gonna also be deleting that. And basically, this will be the only transformation needed for this table, because all other values are correct. So let's do that. If you remember for that purpose we used na drop method so let's copy this one let me just copy this i'm gonna paste it here dot na dot drop and now we need to assign that to this value here okay perfect and if i execute this I'll be able to see my code completed and let's see our table now. Ok, our table is perfect now. What is next step? Next step is always to export our data to data lake storage account and this time also we will be copying this code from here. I'm gonna paste it here. Ok, perfect. Uh, let me just transform data stays the same. Now let me use this here. Mm, let me provide name here and also name here. You need to change this each time. And let's provide name of that file. Instead of row, I'm gonna just replace that and put transformed. Transformed. Now this should be perfect, except this one here. So let's replace also that one. Dim customers. Now it will be dim payment method. Let me see for this one, as you can see I forgot for this one to change that, so I will need to replace that one. Basically what we did here, I imported customer's data instead of this one and I just provided correct name. So I will need to replace that. How I'm gonna do that? I'm gonna first remove that that I imported. Let's go back to transform data. And dim sales channel transformed, let's delete that one. Ok, perfect. Now let's execute that code. Mm, yes, that should be now fine. Ok, now we need to provide new value here. For this, I'm gonna put 1 and I'm gonna mount it here also. I'm gonna put 1. Just to be different, run cell and let's see now what will happen. Now it's working and we should be able to see that file also imported. Ok, perfect. Let's check this container, let's refresh this and now we have our file imported. Now let's proceed to that next one that we already completed. So uh, we completed here everything, we just need to run this code and now let's, if I click on this, let's run this. Now this code is executed, let's go to this Azure Data Lake storage, let's refresh that. And now we also have that third file imported, that's perfect. We have only one more file left to be completed. It's basically our sales table, let's go back to raw data. It's this fact sales. So let's now do the same for that one is our table and now we will need first to import the table. Let's copy this code instead of 
this payment method it will be fact sales and now let's provide also that name here instead of this and this should be fine now we will be able to import our data let's run this cell and data is successfully imported let's just check our table so I'm gonna copy this one paste it here dot show and let's run this code to be able to see our table okay this is our table now we have a lot of columns so you are not able to to see everything properly here now we will need to transform something first okay now to be able to see this data better now let's first remove columns that we don't need now let's go back to this cell here type enter and let's remove these columns so first column that i don't need is uh, let's remove this discount flag so basically i'm gonna type job open parentheses and i'm gonna need to provide only the column name you just need to provide column name inside of this drop function i'm gonna assign this back to my table so let's type like this and if i do that i will be able to remove that first column but it's not the only column that i would like to remove let me also copy this i'm gonna copy a few more times now i'm gonna need to just change these column names next one will be uh, let me just remove this customer feedback i don't need that also this warranty id is not important for us let's see what else we have employee id also we can remove store id let's copy this again progress status id i don't need also and let's check if delivery channel id i also don't need that delivery channel id i can also remove that one and now this should be better let's run this code this way we will be able to remove each of these columns from our data frame let's run this okay we don't have any errors let's run this cell and now let's see our data now it's much better we don't have that many columns so we are now able to see them properly now as you can see in some columns for example this total amount tax amount shipping cost this manufacturing cost we have those dollar signs inside of them but basically if you see here we also have some dollar signs after these values so basically this means that these are text values not the currency so we will remove all these dollar signs from our columns so let's do that now that is the next step in our transformation let's use our data set okay perfect now let's type equal now i'm gonna apply on our data set with column function you will be able to see why with column and now let's provide column column will be first total amount of course we need to put that in quotes so on that column i'm gonna apply some function now we can see that we already did some transformation similar to this one basically for that purpose we're gonna be using that replace function if you remember let me just show you as you can see it is this function here so let me copy this from here just to show you how you can apply that function mm, okay let's paste it here and now this is our column name that we provided also this is replace function so what we need to replace we need to replace in this type column it was in previous case now it's this total amount column in that column we need to replace we had that type now it's dollar sign and we need to replace that with what with nothing so we will leave this as it is now we have few more columns for which we need to do the same so let's copy this we have four columns exactly i think no we have five so uh, first one is total amount next one is tax amount let's check it's total amount tax amount shipping cost this manufacturing costs and we have at the end profit we are not now able to see it but we we're gonna also be changing that so tax amount 
let's copy this one, paste it here. Next one is shipping cost. Shipping cost. Okay, perfect. Let's also copy that here. Next one is manufacturing cost. Um, let me just copy like this. Manufacturing cost, perfect. Copy here, and last one is profit. Profit, and let's type here also profit. Profit. Okay, now that we provided those columns, let's run this code and let's check if our function will do the job. As you can see, we have some error here. Manufacturing cost. Let's check what is the problem here. As you can see, it's costs. Uh, so I need to add S here. And now let's do that one more time. Again, shipping costs. In this case, it's basically cost. Not for this one, but for this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, it's completed properly. And now let's check our data set. If I run this show function. Now, as you can see, we still have values in those columns. Uh, here's the thing. This character here is basically keyword in this replace function. So we will need to skip that somehow. And for that purpose, I'm going to be using just those two slashes. So let's do the same for next one. Also for this one here, for this one, and perfect. Let's run this code now. It should be able to work properly. Let's see our data. And now, as you can see, now these dollar signs are removed. Now we have our data properly formatted and we are able to proceed to next step. Let's see what will be our next step. Basically, as you can see, we have some space inside. Uh, let me just inside these cells. So for some we have normal values and for some we have space. So let's fix that first. Let me show you how you can do that. I'm gonna type enter here. And now I'm gonna copy this variable. And also again, I'm gonna be using this with column. Let's copy that here and open parentheses. Now what we need to provide? Again, we need of course to provide column name. We're gonna be providing all column names that we already used column name. Also next one is function that we will be using. Previously we used this replace function and now we will be using trim function for that purpose. Let's type trim, open that function and now I'm going to need to provide column name. For that purpose I'm going to be using this call of course and inside of these brackets let's provide basically our column name. So let's see what this function is doing. Basically on this total amount column we are applying this trim function and it requires one argument again our column name its total amount so if I assign this back to our variable and if I run this code I'll be able to see that it's working but let me do the same for all the other columns so let's copy this four more times okay perfect and now let's provide these other column names Now we completed that and now let's run this code. Let's see what will happen. It is completed without errors. So let's check our data. Now let's see these columns. As you can see, we don't have any more space in these columns. Okay, that's perfect. Now that we completed that, we are able to save this file to Azure Data Lake Storage account. So we are going to be using same code like we did here. We will just need to change few parameters. So uh, let me just instead of uh, now I'm going to using instead of this here, I'm going to be using fact sales instead of this also fact sales and table will be fact sales transformed. Transformed and instead of this variable here, we'll be exporting fact sales basically. Just for you to understand, we are completing all these changes on this variable here. It is basically our table 
data set, data frame, whatever you call it. And then we are using that here and just basically exporting that table to this location here that we created by using this code. Because this fact sales table is bigger and it will create multiple partitions, which means that it will create few separate files. For example, file 1 will contain, for example, 1000 rows, file 2, 1000 rows and so on, because it's bigger file. And now I would like to specify that I would like to have only one file. So let's do that. Let's type like this. Repartition and let's provide number one inside of this. If I provide two, I will get two partitions. If I provide three, three partitions and so on. So let's assign this back to our uh, data set. I think it's also necessary to do that. Yes. And now I'm able to run my code. Let's click on this, run cell, and let's check if we have any errors. Now it's completed, and let's check if we have that file in our storage. Absolutely. Now everything is perfect. We transformed and imported our files to this transform data container. Ok, now let's check our project plan. In previous section we completed this Databricks part. Basically we successfully transformed our data. We first imported data from raw data container. It is transformed using Databricks and then loaded into Azure Data Lake storage account in this transformed data container. Now we are ready to proceed to next step. As you can see, next step is importing the data using Azure Data Factory into Azure SQL database. So for that purpose we are going to be creating the Azure SQL Server and Azure SQL Database. And that will be first step. After that we are going to be creating pipeline in Azure Data Factory that will get our data from Azure Data Lake Storage and load it into Azure SQL Database. So let's first create our Azure SQL Server and Database. If I go to Azure Portal, I will be able to see resources that I already have. As you can see, I don't have any Azure SQL servers or some databases, so let's check how can we create a new one. I'm going to type here SQL Server. As you can see, I have also those two options recommended, but let's type SQL. Basically, let's type SQL Database. And we are going to be creating first database, and inside database, we are going to be also creating server. So, let's do that. First, we need to provide subscription. Also, we need to provide a resource group. It's this end-to-end -end project. Basically, you can choose your own resource group. Also, you can create a new one if you don't have. Now, let's provide database name. I'm going to call it end-to-end -end DB. Let's try something like that. OK, select server. And now, because we don't have server, so I will click on this create new. Now, I need to provide server name. Let's try end to end server, something like that. Okay, that's perfect. For this region, I'm gonna choose some other region. Let's try, for example, this one. And for this authentication method, let's click on this use SQL authentication. So, what we need to provide now? So, first, we need to provide this server login admin. I'm gonna type, for example, SQL. You can put something else and also we need to, pro to create some password. Let's so create something like this. OK. OK, perfect. Now you need to create password on your own and don't forget to keep this password because you will need that later to log in to this database. So I'm going to click on OK. And now we have different options here. Let me scroll up a little bit. As you can see, we have our estimated costs. So currently it's $450, but let's make it less. Let's see how can we do that. Instead of production, we will be using this development. And now you will be able to see that our costs will be much lower. Okay, perfect. Let's also check what we can choose here. Maybe I could choose this one. 
but it's not that important in this case. Let's click on next networking. And now we have this connectivity mode, which is also important for us. So we need to enable public endpoint. Basically we will, as you can see, allow Azure services to access this server. Yes. And also we will add current client IP address. Yes. This option we will leave as it is. And also for this one. Let's click on next security. For this one, I'm going to leave it as it is. Let's check if we need to change something. No. Let's click on next. Here we are able to provide three options. First is none. Basically this first one means that we don't have any data to import in our database. So I will choose this one. But you can also use some sample database and also back up your existing database. But in this case, as I said, I will be using this none. Collection for this one it's not important. And also for this one, let's click on next, next. And I will be able to create my database. Let's click on create. Currently, as you can see, it's validating. So we just need to wait for Azure to complete it. Okay, perfect. Now, as you can see, everything is completed. So now let's click on this go to resource. And now we will be able to see our database. What is important here for us? We will need this server name. So what we need is for basically, I would like to connect this Azure SQL database to my SQL server management studio on my desktop. So for that purpose, I'm going to be using this server name. Let's copy that and let's go to SQL Server Management Studio and now I'm gonna need to establish the connection. Let's click on connect database engine and now I will need to paste here my server name. You have also option for example to log into your local server but we will this time using this this one this server that we copied. Also, we will be using this SQL Server authentication. And now we will need to provide that login and password that we previously created. So, login is this one and I'm going to type my password here. Let's click on connect. And now let's check if everything is connected properly. As you can see, we are now able to see name of our database here. We are able to click on this option databases and now we have our end to end database. Now we don't have any tables or something else in our database. So we will need to create one now. Let's click on tables. Let's click on external. But as you can see, we don't have any tables here. Now that we connected successfully Azure SQL database to our local SQL Server Management Studio. Now we can go back to Azure portal and now let's find our server. So basically this is our SQL database and if I click on that, I will be able to see the information about this database. This is our server name that we used previously. Also if I click on, on this search bar here, if I type SQL server, if I choose this option here, I will be able to see this SQL server that we created. Of course, we can create multiple servers, but we created only one for this purpose. And now we are able to choose SQL databases. Here is our SQL database that we created. Let's click on that one. And now we are able to see our database. So let's click on this query editor preview. And now we will be able to actually create queries and to login basically first to our database. Let's click on that. And now we are able to query our, our database to see our tables and so on. Now it's time to import our files in Azure SQL database. So let's do that. First, we need to see files that we would like to import. Basically, I will just import one file just to show you how you can do this and you will be able to import other three files on your own. So let's click on this containers tab. 
and here we will be able to see our containers. Let's click on this transform data and now let's for example import this payment method. If I click on this I will be able to see my data. Ok, now as you can see I have two columns here, payment method ID and payment method. So I'm going to create these two columns in my database. So let's go to SQL Server Management Studio. And now I'm going to click on this option new query. Ok, perfect. Now let's paste those two values and those will be our columns. First I'm going to type create table. Table name will be payment method for example. Payment method. Open parentheses and for this one let's put for example 50 and let's also put for this one 50 for example. If I execute this code, uh, I will need to change this, yes. So let's try like this. And now we successfully created our table. And now we need to import that table from Azure Data Lake Storage to this table that we created now. So let's go back to Azure Portal. Let's click on Home. And now let's go to Azure Data Lake Storage Account, Containers, and Transform Data. So basically we will be importing this file here, and now let's do that. For that purpose we are going to be using uh, Azure Data Factory, so let's click on Azure Data Factory. I'm going to click on this option here. We will be able to see pipeline that we already created and now I'm going to create new one. Let's click on this outer tab and let's click on this plus sign. Pipeline, ok, let's create new one, perfect. Now let's find that copy data option. Let's call it ADLS2 SQL. Ok, perfect. Now we need to provide source and sync options. For source, let's see if we have something. No, we need to create new. And let's scroll down to see what we will be using. We will be using this Azure Blob Storage. Let's click on continue. Let's, let's click on CSV. And let's use linked service. We already created one. So I think we will be able to use this one once again. Let me just browse this and let's click on transform data. Dim payment method transformed. And let's click on this one. Ok, perfect. If I click on this. I will be able to establish my connection. But let's see if it's properly established. Let's click on preview data. And now we are able to see our data, which means that this connection is successful. Now we need to create sync connection. For that purpose we are going to be creating connection between Azure Data Factory and Azure SQL Database. So let's click on new. Let's type Azure SQL Database continue. For this link service we are going to be creating new. And let's scroll down. We need to provide server name. It's our server here, database name, it's this one. Also for this authentication type let's choose SQL authentication and now we need to provide username and password. Let's test this connection. Ok, it is successful, so now we can create that connection. 
Now, as you can see, we successfully created that link service. And now it's time to choose our table. Let's click on this table name and we will be able to see our table that we created. So for schema, we will leave this option as it is and let's click on OK. And basically we successfully created that connection. So now we will need to use one more function. It's this mapping function. So let's click on this new mapping. And for this one, let's choose payment method ID. And for this one, let's scroll this. Let's choose this payment method ID. Okay, perfect. So let's add another one. And for this one, let's use this payment method. And for this one, let's use payment method. Okay, perfect. Okay, now that we completed this mapping process, let's try to run this pipeline. Well, let's first click on this validate button and we don't have any errors as you can see. Let's close this and now let's try to click on this debug to see if this pipeline will be working. As you can see, this pipeline is successful so we have this status succeeded here. Now let's check if actually we imported our data properly in our table. Let's go to SQL Server Management Studio. Let's Type select star from and we'll be using this payment method. Let me see in my database how exactly it's called. TBO payment method basically. So let's run this. Executed. Our table is successfully imported and we basically completed this part. Let me just create another table just to show you one more time full process. It will be easier for you to understand it. So let's click on this home tab and let's go to our data lake storage account on containers, transform data. And now this time let's use for example these customers. It is bigger table so let's see if I click on that. Let me click on this edit button. And now I will be able to see my data here. Now let me copy column names and let's go to SQL Server Management Studio. Let's press enter here. And now I'm going to be creating a new table. Create table. This one will be customers. Customers. Open parentheses. As you can see for data types I'm using varchar, basically you can create your table with proper data types, for example for age you will have integer or something like that, but this is just for quick demonstration. So let's create this table, let's click on execute, and now let me see, I see what is the error here, uh, we need to put, and we need to put that also for customer name, and now it should be fine. Let's execute this and now it's perfect. Okay, if I select star from from this table, let me refresh this. Databases. This is my database. Tables. And if I use this table here, 
If I read everything from that table, I will be able to see that I only have column names. As you can see, we have only column names here. Ok, perfect. Now we need to import that data once again. So let's go back to Azure Portal, Home tab, and basically from Azure Data Lake Storage account we will be again importing into SQL database. So let's go to Azure Data Factory. Let's do one more copy data. And now let's provide, let's just copy data too, for example. This is not important in this case, but you will need to provide name for your copy data activity. We need to provide source and sync, of course, and later on we will be working also on mapping. So let's click on this source, let's create new, Azure Blob Storage, continue, CSV file, linked service we already have, and now I'm gonna need to find my file here, transform data, dim customers, and this one is our CSV file, click on OK. We will leave this as it is because we already have first header, so we will leave this option checked and also I'm going to import schema from connection. Let's click on OK. And now source is completed. Let's preview our data. OK, perfect. We successfully imported our data into Azure Data Factory. Now we need to load the data into our database basically in our table that we created in SQL Server Management Studio. So let's click on Sync. Basically we will need to create new because we have new table. So a SQL Database, Azure SQL Database. This is our option. Continue. You can change this name, but I will leave it as it is for now. And uh, for Linked Service, let's choose that existing one. And we will just need to create another table. Instead of payment method, this time we will be using these customers. That is table that we just created. I'm going to be using this import schema again. Click on OK. And now this sync is completed. Let me just connect this one to this one. So we will try first to execute this one. And after that is completed, we will execute this one. But let me show you what will happen if you don't complete this mapping part. So let's validate this pipeline. We don't have any errors basically. And let's click on this debug. And now we will be able to see this part first completed. This part will fail because we didn't map our data properly. So as you can see this first part is completed. This one here which is expected and now we will expect this one to fail. So let's see Currently it's in progress and let's see if it will work as we expected. Yes, basically this second one is failed. If I click on this error here, I'll be able to see message. So basically I have some code for this error and so on, but this part is important. The column customer ID is not found in target side. Basically Azure Data Factory doesn't know which customer ID we would like to use in that target table. So the reason for that is because column names from source table are different from column names from target table. So basically that's the only reason. And now let's complete that mapping part. If I click on that, if I click on mapping, I'm going to click on this new mapping. First I'm going to use customer ID and now I will be able to provide customer ID here. As you can see, those column names are different. This first one from source doesn't have that underscore and this one has. So we need to map all these columns. Let's click on this new one. We will add multiple of them. For this one, let's choose customer name. For this one, let's choose customer basically type. And also we have city, here we are also able to see, let me just scroll down, country, let me add few more these, country, after country we could also include this one, longitude, and let me see what else we have. Longitude, age, age and gender. Ok, age and we need one more. It will be gender.
Okay, gender, perfect. Now we successfully choose those columns from source. Now we need to choose corresponding columns from destination. So first one we already have chosen. And now customer name is next. Next one is type. Next one is city. Country. This one. This one. Age and let me see gender. Now it should be fine. Let me just close that and let's validate this once again. We don't have any errors and now let's try to run this code. And now this time both of these are successfully completed. Now let's see if we successfully imported our data in our table. Let's go back to SQL Server Management Studio and now let's see if something changed in this table. If I execute this, this table completely populated with data. So we successfully completed our process from importing our data, then transforming it and now loading into our database. I hope that you enjoyed this project. Thank you for watching.